Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rebecca and on this channel I go through all things accounting, finance, excel and investment related so if you like this kind of content then please do consider subscribing and otherwise let's jump straight into the video. So in the last video I showed you a walkthrough of my top three favourite sales reports that you can run at month end and at year end and all three are useful if you are preparing a set of financial statements or if you've got the auditors in and they're asking for certain information around sales. So today I thought that we would go in the opposite direction and have a look at my top three favourite reports for suppliers. So let's jump straight into it. I'm just going to expand this because you can't see it too well. So we're going to go into suppliers over here. And like with customers up here, all of the reports are at the end. So if we just click on supplies and reports, this is why I like this version of Sage because it is really user friendly for anybody who hasn't used it before. So we immediately get a pop up screen here and we get a list of various different reports that we can run. The first report that I really like is within age creditors. So if you're trying to run an age creditors report or trade creditors report at month end or year end or within a specific time period or on a specific day, then what we can do is just scroll all the way down here because I think it's towards the end and we can find this age creditors analysis summary. So if we just double click on that or you can click on enter on your keyboard, it doesn't really matter. Now up here, We've got supplier references. Now that defaults to blank and ZZZ because that's going to pick up the very first supplier that you've got listed in your Sage 50. And the ZZZ is going to pick up the very, very last because that's the last reference that you can use for a supplier. Now the report date, too inclusive, I'm going to set that to the 31st of August 21. I'm just clicking on here. And I'm not going to change include future transactions or exclude later payments, so I'm just going to click on OK. So one of the reasons why I really love this report is because it's got multiple uses. So what it gives you is the date that this report was run, the time it was run, the report date. So it gives you the supplier account number, the supplier name, their credit limit, the turnover within that period that you've chosen, balance, future, current, period one, period two, period three, and period four. So it's useful because it's given you a snapshot of exactly what is due out to suppliers at the 31st of August, 2021 in this case. So it shows you the net balance that's due to those suppliers. So if you've had any supplier invoices, any supplier credit notes or any payments, what is left? will be shown here and it's been aged so when we say that something's been aged it just means that we're categorizing how old that balance is so if it's in current then it's most likely going to be less than 30 days if it's in period one it's 31 to 60 days period two you know 61 to 90 days period three more than that and again older more than that again so it's a very simple report that gives you a whole lot of information now, the second reason why this report is one of my favourites is because if you have auditors coming in to look at your set of financial statements, sometimes one of the things that they will ask you for is a supplier turnover report. So this actually gives you that information in that turnover column there. So sometimes as part of that analytical review process, when they're having a look at comparisons between this year and last year, particularly in the creditors section, what they'll have a look at is what your top 10 suppliers are or top five or top 20, depending on how big your company is. So they'll want to compare that to last year's just to gain an understanding of fluctuations within the year, if there are any. And it just sort of backs up some of the supporting documentation that they'll obtain as part of the audit also. So it's a very useful report. Now, the only limitation of this particular report is it's a summary. So you can see there it's age creditors analysis summary. So like I said before, it's only giving you that net balance at that certain point in time. It doesn't split it out by say how many invoices there are, how many credit notes, etc. So I'm going to show you the report that does do that. So it's very similar, very similar in name. So we're going to click on close up here. And we're just going to click on this age creditors analysis detailed one. Here, I'm just going to change the end balance again to the 31st of August, but when you're running these reports, you can obviously change the period to the date that you want it to be run to, so you could report on the entire year if you want to. So just change that to the first day in the year and that to the end, or you can do it monthly, daily, however you want to run these reports. So I don't want to preview it, which you can do. So if you've got 
a lot of suppliers within your company you can just do a preview report just to double check that that's the report you want to run because sometimes if there's a lot of users using sage within your company and they're running reports that are large reports it's going to slow down the use of sage potentially so you don't want to be doing that so you can always run a preview just by using this section here so we're not going to change these we're not going to include future transactions or exclude later payments we're going to click on ok and you can see here that we've now got the age creditor analysis detailed report so once again that's giving you the date time it was run the date from date to if it includes future transactions or excluded later payments, for example. And then it's given us a listing by supplier account name. So you can see here it's, it's in alphabetical order. So you've got CON001, MCN001, etc., all the way down to the bottom. And that's now splitting that out by purchase invoice for these individual suppliers. So you can see there that Concept Stationery Supplies only has four purchase invoices that are outstanding, whereas McNally Computer Supplies has a whole lot more there. So if we scroll down to the very bottom here, and I could do that using the scroll bar or just using my mouse, we can see that we've got grand totals of £44,502.68 due, and all of those are in the older category there. So like you can with any of the reports within Stage 50, you can now export this. So if you just click on export up here, you've got the options of then exporting to PDF, Excel or another format, whichever format is useful for you. Because in some cases you might be using Sage for one type of reporting and then exporting that information into another system potentially. So there's various different options that you can export in just by clicking on export. The other thing that you can do is print if you've got that set up. And the last thing that you can do, which again, I'm not going to show you on this video, just like I didn't show on the sales video, is you can edit the style of this particular document. So if you go into Report Builder within Sage, you can change the layout, you can add other information onto here, etc. But what I will say with that is that you really do need to know what you're doing with that because you can get yourself in a little bit of a mess if you don't understand how to use the Report Builder. But we'll go and set another video later down the line. So I'm just going to close this one now by clicking close. Now, although those two reports show you how much is due to suppliers at a certain point in time in some reversion and detailed version, what they don't show you is movements in that period. So they don't show the likes of purchase invoices, purchase credit notes, purchase payments, payment on accounts, etc. for particular suppliers. So if we want to see that, what we can do is click on supplier activity go down to supplier activity detailed which is right at the bottom here and we're going to change this to the 31st of August so we're not going to change any of this down here because you might have department numbers within your Sage 50 so if you don't want to look at a specific department number and you want to look at everything so every supplier within that certain date range you want to see all purchase invoices credit notes everything then don't change any of this information down here now we're not going to include brought forward transactions or exclude later payments we're just going to click on ok and this is the report that we can see so again it's a supplier activity detail report it gives you the date it was run the date to the time it was run it also tells you if there's any brought forward transactions or if it's excluded later payments or not and then down here, what we've got is a listing of all purchase invoices, payments, credit notes, everything listed under every supplier. And this is all alphabetized by the supplier account number up here. So this can be really useful if you've recently onboarded new suppliers and you're looking at the timing of those invoices being received and put onto your system, for example. So if you're trying to look at the lights of cash flow and you're trying to incorporate and anticipate those invoices being received, then this particular report is quite useful because it does give you that information of when those have been input onto the system. And it also shows you when payments have been made. So you can create a trend analysis if you like to, to see when you're making payments so that again, you can manage your cash a little bit better and see if you're paying individuals before the end of their supply credit terms or not. So one of the reasons why I love this file as well is because again, from an audit point of view, 
it's very useful if they are trying to undertake walkthrough testing or transaction testing. So sometimes they might want to have a look at a few of your purchase invoices within your system for various different testing. So if they can see that information by supplier in this format, so in Excel, PDF or whatever format they're asking for, then this report is going to give them that information quickly. So it's going to save you time in the long run when trying to answer some of those audit queries that you might have. So I'm going to end it there. I hope you found the video useful. Give it a thumbs up if you like the video. If you've got any comments or if you liked a certain topic in Stage 50 to be covered, then by all means put those in the comment section. Consider subscribing as always and I shall see you on the next video.